Well, Blessed Friday to you as we come with your daily encouragement. And we had been just finishing a little section here of uh, 1 Peter 3. And it talked about having an accounting for the hope that lies within you. And that accounting comes with being on the Lord's side and not necessarily on the side of society. Sometimes that means that you can be a little bit contrary to even the people that are around you, whether it be the denomination you belong to and people are saying you should belong to another one. Consider it, but also consider, first of all, where the Lord is calling you. And the Lord doesn't necessarily call you to have the same standards of success as the world does. He calls you to be faithful. And so that means where you have been um, born into the family, those are the people that are on your side. Unless the Lord calls you away from them to be a missionary in another place. It doesn't mean you disown your family per se. Some have to, but that's only a last resort. It means acknowledging your place in this situation. Sometimes it means leaving your denomination, and sometimes it means staying. Sometimes it means uh, living in a certain area, and sometimes it means going. And that's what Peter and the other apostles gave as their example. And when we're kind of talking about submission and we're talking about slavery, the, that was the societal norm. And so because of their belief that God had placed them there at that time and the belief that Jesus was coming soon, they didn't consider the whole idea of changing society as later Christians have um, marketed, which was to make all one in Christ Jesus. But they had chosen the model, both Peter and Paul, of both submission and also of slavery as an acceptable thing for them to embrace. It doesn't mean it was for all times and all places, because later Christians would get a, a larger vision, a more nuanced vision, because they believed that uh, the delay had happened and God had given them some examples of justice and righteousness on how to submit. So you can be countercultural, be against the submission and hierarchical society, and you can be countercultural in embracing your role in that. The key difference is you listen to the Lord. And that's the thing that is the common denominator in both of those situations. So let's look at what we have here in verse uh, 16. It says, And do it, taking an accounting with the hope that is in you, with gentleness and reverence. Gentleness, knowing that you can be wrong. Reverence in knowing that you have someone higher that you're working for. You're not working for yourself, per se. You're working to where the Lord wants you to be. So gentleness and reverence, I think, are two key components. And I've acknowledged that when I've disagreed with people. I could be wrong. I, I could be in the wrong place at the wrong time. But I pray, and that's why we're called to be in prayer, that God would put you in the right place at the right time. And it's not going to be on society standards or success. It's going to be on where the Lord wants you to be. And that's what I've tried to give examples from myself, the church I belong to, the denomination I'm a part of. They are not perfect, far from perfect, but they are the place where God is showing his spirit and my place in that. And for others, it means going away from those things. And for others, it means a little bit of both. And sometimes it means kind of being in that middle ground, finding yourself sometimes in a position that the world would say is untenable. But it is tenable. It is the right place because the Lord has called you to it. So keep your conscience clear, it says, Peter says, so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for, for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. Your good content in Christ. I, I've had this happen before, where I've met someone who we have a congruity with life and in general with um, positions on things, and then something 
shocks them. Either I'm allying with a certain political position that is contrary to them. I am from a denomination or from a church that they do not like. Now, I've talked about denomination. We could talk about style. We could talk about people. Sometimes um, I've had some difficulty with some people because they don't like some members of my congregation. They just are not in the same boat with them, and they just can't believe that I can be in the in with their fellowship or I'm their pastor or something like that. And I say, well, this is where God has called me. And, you know, maybe God has not called you there, but I appreciate our friendship if we can have it, if we have differences of sometimes politics, sometimes denomination, sometimes being near or far. I mean, sometimes I've disappointed people by not joining them in some mission in a faraway place or a place that is relatively near. But you know who I am accountable ultimately to is the Lord. And in each place, in each time, each situation, the Lord has been very clear on where I need to be. And the question you need to ask yourself, are you in that type of security? If you are, God bless you, press on. If you are not, if you are at a stage in life, and it doesn't matter what age you are, but it does matter that you're listening to one voice and one voice alone as number one, and that is the Lord. Then, if they malign you, as it says, they'll at least know that you have good conduct. And that means they cannot morally say there is something wrong with you. They can only disagree that you're in the place that they don't want you to see. And let me tell you, that can be anyone, and I've had it in the past, as close as a mother or a parent or something of that nature, where they've wanted to see me somewhere else. But you know what they've usually done? Is they've relented and said, you're listening to the Lord. And you should listen to the Lord first. I'm only giving you my opinion. Even a fellow pastor or some other person, a parishioner, I can say, God bless you. Thank you for that. But I'm going to listen to the Lord first. And so, all of those things need to be accounted for. But the ultimate person that we are to hold our confidence, our foundation, is not in our position, is not in the security of our family situation or even of our affiliation, whether it be political or denominational. Our position is strictly, according to First Peter, in the Lord. Think of Martin Luther, who challenged the whole Catholic structure with one message that he found security in, and he found security not in his denomination by any means. He never even intended to found one. That was where he showed his humility. But his tenacity was the call of the Lord, who had baptized him, who fed him from his very body, and encouraged him to say, Here I stand. I can do no other. God bless you today. We trust that these continue to be words of encouragement. Take care. God bless. We'll see you next time.